Right, first lot of deck changes. Hey everyone, I'm Clue, welcome back to Teleshare. So we're still trying to get a win with our Cheyenne combo deck. So what did I take out? I took out Alpha Rampage, uh, Soul Reaping, anything else? Just those three cards, I feel like. Uh, no, one version, one copy of Steel Blade Supremacy and one copy of, where is it? Can I even see the one copy? It's, it's completely eluding me, right? Lexi's lightning card. There we go. Cool down lightning. It's not even Lexi's. No, it is Lexi's specialization. Right. So we cut them. We stuck in frost hex more so just as a blue pitcher ball and as a way to fuse both endless winter and ice eternal because fusing both of them makes them a lot stronger. Right. And then stuck in another warmonger's diplomacy, just a way to stall. Uh, and anything else? Sift. Sift just as a Good way to cycle cards right because again the big thing is we need to land high striker and the only way i really foresee doing that is off of starstruck or crippling crush the arc knight ascendancy right with the goliath gauntlet is doing seven chances are in most matchups though your opponent will be able to block all seven of that damage right even though it has dominate so one in hand and then the rest of the equipment can probably go towards blocking arc knight ascendancy but it still has its uses in pressuring and in certain matchups, right, if you look at their equipment, you work it out, say three for the card in hand, and then, you know, four off of the equipment, right, you know not to play it, if otherwise you can play, right? So, probably up on the chopping block next, but we need some targets for Art of War, because at this point, we don't have that many attacks to actually use Art of War's banish ability, right? In fact, Art of War at this point might be cut as well, because we can only play, uh, what, Two Crippling Crushes, two Starstrucks, and six. There's six cards that Art of War can hit, right? So it's not that great. Uh, probably worth cutting at that point too. But yeah, we'll wait for a matchup and see how the new revision goes. Ooh, now this is the matchup we like to see. So when a weapon uh, you control hits, you may attack an additional time with the, that weapon this turn. Yeah, that's what we like. Right, so it makes our Blood on Her Hands combo a lot stronger. We'll have to see how it goes. If we can land it, right, that is the big hurdle as usual, is getting the copper and then finding Blood on Her Hands before we get KO'd by our opponent. Okay, what's our starting hand look like? Not, not horrible. I should really get rid of Northern Winds. If it worked, it would be such a good card, especially in this matchup, right? You just freeze Dawnblade, but I know it's not going to work. Right. I mean, we'll try it. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, blocking wise, I guess we're just doing Buzzsaw Trap. Uh, defense attack. Yeah, so it works on Doorblade, which is good. Right. So <laughs> perfect way to shut down this opener. Yep. Go ahead. Proc everything. Go nuts. Go on. Uh, you know what? We'll act like it's all good. Right. And then we'll just neuter it. Uh, the next weapon attack this turn. No, so we actually, we want to block the second one, right? Yeah, the second one's going to be bigger. I mean, we still should probably full block anyway. We cycle, eh, that was, that was horrible English. We're going to cycle blood on our hands, so we'll probably block like that. All right, pass. Think blood on our hands. One more diplomacy, that's good. Iron Song gives plus one, right, so they get through, that's fine. The big Nexus swing is what we want to shut down more than anything. They get the two copper, it's fine. They're gonna swing again. Come on, show us the, the big hit you're aiming for. Why is it only four? Ah, right, because the spoils of war was something else. That's not that's not as scary as what I was thinking. So we're gonna play the buzzsaw trap. And yeah, we'll probably play the Warmonger's Diplomacy. Right, I, again, I don't trust the Northern Winds. Should have, I should have probably kept the Crippling Crush. So, we'll see. I thought that turn was going to be scarier. I don't know why, right? I thought two spoil, Spoilers of War because of the pop-ups, but it's one for each effect, right? So one for the plus two and then one for the Copper Tokens. Definitely going to play as Dorinthia. Uh, ooh, interesting. I mean, we might as well sift for something, no? Just cycle through cards anyway. Uh, get rid of Northern Winds and the Frost X. We get Art of War. Spike Pit Trap is good, though. That's definitely going into Arsenal, so we're just going to play Warmonger's Diplomacy. 
right? Uh, ch -ch -ch, during their next turn. Good. So I was just wondering if it shuts down our ability to play the spike pick trap. So we probably want to pick peace. Go on. I mean, Dorinthia is probably the, the biggest what do I do off of Warmonger's Diplomacy, right? Because half of your stuff is buffing, half of your stuff is attacking. So it's it's really good in the matchup. If I can understand the thought process. Uh, pass and stick that in our arsenal. Tome, Alluring Inducement probably won't help us, right? Because I doubt they have any real attacks. Spark of Genius, we do want to get out. We're probably just cycling the Alluring Inducement. Might even do that before they go. Uh, maybe. Because I'm thinking, you know, do something like a Tome into Spark of Genius off the Mage Master Boots. Right, in which case we're going to do Art of War, Inluring Inducements. Uh, no, because we need to pitch something. Hmm, that doesn't quite work. Everything costs such we need. Learning inducement. Uh, so yeah, it's probably better to play this round. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to pitch the tome. Play real defensively. Uh, ch -ch buff and banish. The learning inducement is just a dead card in this matchup. I am pretty sure. Not absolutely sure, but pretty sure. Luminar's Ascension. Well, they've got some sort of buff. Right, usually do. We can always do Spike Pit Trap if it's too great. Yeah, plus three, it's fine. They also have an instant, that's interesting. Curious what their instant is. Uh, so they discard, put the top card of the deck into the graveyard. So they discard one from the deck, and if it's something they've already played, right, essentially, they lose life. It's always just minus one, right? No, it's minus two if they've played it before. Uh, target weapon gains go again. It's fine. And they draw a card. Oh. So we can block the next one with, I guess, Crippling Crush. And just play the Spark of Genius. That's both, is that both Crippling Crushes? No, the first one we cycled. I'm gonna swing again. Play weapon and attack actions. Non-attack, oh yes, attack reactions are classed as attack. So actually Warmongers is not good in Dorinthia, in hindsight. What is their Copper Spender? Or is it just uh, pop cards? Ah, <laughs> but they can't, because of Warmongers. Oh, so the go again was dead. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we're just going to play Spark of Genius. Zero, find our Tech Core, And stick a Crippling Crush in our Arsenal. Easy turn for us. Probably take the damage now. So we get to... Uh, so we need five for the Crippling Crush. Starstruck, better to get off. Attacks greater than the damage. Yeah, so Starstruck does shut them down. The Tome is a little bit annoying because we can't block with it. But we need five. So we need the blue and the yellow. So we can block with one card. I guess we block with Starstruck. Plus one and dominate. And go again in piercing. Probably just actually take the full hit, right? And just go for a big counter attack our turn. What is piercing? Defended by equipment, it has plus one. And it has go again. And go again, yeah. So the second swing is usually stronger, no? Either way, we're gonna clap back with a, a pretty hefty turn of Aaron. Don't they already have go again from Precision Press? Seems like they uh, they have a few misplays. Uh, I'm gonna say no, right? Because we can ice eternal into crippling crush or something, right, off of our mage master boots. So I think we might be able to get a big turn off. Kind of wish I had snapdragon scalers. Would we even get to 14? Probably not 14, but I think there are some other cards that we can find. 
to do some decent chunks of damage because we get three because the spring tunic now pops. Oh, they're popping their tunic. They're not like Kassai where they just go crazy. Seven's fine. Get plus one. And it's our turn. Dorinthia, please play the tome. We get Northern Wind, so we can even fuse the Ice Eternal. Right. And still play the Northern Winds. And just go for a real big shutdown. Uh, okay. So we have two. That's three. So we're definitely popping the Tunic, at the very least. Right, that's three. We want the Northern Winds to fuse. So we're probably only playing this for two. Right, and we're pitching Blood on our hands. Uh, Mage Master, Blood on our hands. I'm hoping my math is correct. Right, we'll see in a second. Play for two. Use it. Right, and then play Crippling Crush. Four, seven. Might have been better going for the Starstruck. I don't know. Because that shuts down Dawnblade, right? Let's see what they do. In block for... We have less HP, so that's only one. They won't lose that. They can do that, so it's three. And they can do that, so it's four. So they can block for four of the equipment, at the very least. Okay. Curious. Because it's a dead turn anyway. Sink below is only four. They double sink below. This is going to just destroy their, their hand, isn't it? Yeah, double sink below. There we go. So it's eight. The three. So it doesn't destroy their hand. But I mean, they had to pitch for it anyway. I would have gone with the equipment and one sink below, right? And there's still an opportunity to, to play something. I mean, they can still swing once, I suppose. You know what I forgot to do? Glyth Gauntlet. Always. I always forget. But I suppose it's better to save it for the Crippling Crush. Uh, not the Crippling Crush. But to save it for the High Striker. But that would have come in clutch there. Right, that would have completely shut down their turn. Eh, what can you do? Ah, and then we get a crap hand. I mean, the Arc Knight Ascendancy, I suppose. They're still blocked for three, right? So the Frost Hex is decent in that regard. And we get another two off the Teclo. That's not horrible. Right? And then just dominate the Goliath Gauntlet. Something like that. Uh, so we get two, we need four, so I need to keep two cards. So we can only block with one. I mean, we could probably just dispose of the spring tuning at this point. They have no way to cycle into another attack, right? Unless they destroy the bolters. But I don't see why they would. I mean, they have a lot of floating. They don't have a way to... There we go. Target weapon gains plus one. Switch deck for attack reaction. Yeah, that's not good. Let's see what they find out. That weapon gains go again. Do they still need the attack an additional time, do they not? Am I missing something on... Ah, right, right, Dorinthia's main ability. That's what I'm missing. You're going to attack again, that's fine. Probably block with the tunic this time. So another four. Like to get the Arcanist Sensei off, but we're just not going to be able to. In all honesty, the not using the Goliath Gauntlet is has lost me the game, right? Which is a big thing. I keep making the those small mistakes, right? I mean, the more we play, the more we learn. Dorinthia, we get to, not that we can use it on anything. Uh, I guess we just sift the Arcanist Sensei. Maybe find a Tome. We find High Striker. Yeah, it's useless. Ah. Uh, Endless winter, endless winter. That's nice, but I don't think we survive this turn, in all honesty. I think, yeah, we really need to land the Crippling Crush and shut down their turn. Ah, shame. Plus three, and if hits, game go again. Plus, then they have Dorinthia's ability. So, first swing is doing seven. 
Right, have to fully block. Which I suppose is what we do. We overblock with the expectation. Ooh, uh, oops. Oh, that one. That. That. And that. I want the warmongers to play. But they most likely have a reaction anyway to buff it. Right. Out for blood. Yeah. So you get the one and they get to swing again. So it's GG. Uh, plus three for another route. And then they have the one floating anyway for another swing. Yeah, the Goliath Gauntlet. My, my full mistake in this one. Ah, we're doing so well. I always forget about though. It was definitely right to move to proc the Ice Eternal with it, right? That Frostbite really came in clutch. It did slow down that turn, but they still got enough through to, to put us in this state, essentially. Ah, no, that's KO, because Route gets rid of a card. Interesting. GG. All right. Decent, decent second go, right? <laughs> We're getting there. I do think this is a bit better with the blues and the uh, frost hex to just enable us to fuse frost a lot more, right? Because it is strong on either Endless Winter or Ice Eternal, right? Uh, whereas it's, if it's fused, adds a defending card to the chain link, create a Frostbite token. That is, that is pretty insane, right? That might allow it, right, to actually uh, land High Striker because they don't want to, you know, fully block it with cards because then they, they kill their turn anyway. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. See ya.